Back to the second half hour, The Factor. Actors have been on strike since July 14th, but that has not stopped entertainer Cedric the Entertainer, the actor-comedian, from getting the bag. He's trying out a new avenue, writing books. He's published his first novel called Flipping Boxcars. I asked him what it's been like to step out of his comfort zone of comedy and acting. So when it comes to getting back out, meeting many of the people of your fans and performing live like you're doing at Rock House, how important is that for you? Um, I mean, you know, of course, I started as stand-up, so having a live audience in front of me, that's a big part of what I do. Of course, you know, I've had a, the blessing to be able to do television and film, and these things kind of take, uh, you know, they take place in a vacuum or a box, you know, if you will, where you're just creating all the content and going. But, you know, the, the opportunity to be able to, man, to touch, touch, touch people, you know, kiss babies, as they say, <laughs> all that, it's great, man, and so it's important. I'm, you know, I'm on a totally different mission because I wrote a book. So this is my, you know, first time as a novelist being able really to get out, explain what I wanted to do and why I did it, and of course trying to get people, you know, to go and buy the book and just let them know I got a whole other side of me, and, you know, and of course uh, encourage them to do the same. And how different was that putting pen to paper from the visual medium that you're used to? Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, the, the difficult aspect is, of course is that writing a book is that you have to really stay true to uh, the characters that you first designed, the plot points, and again, and just, you know, making sure that your antagonist, the the, the story that you have for him, that it, it, it aligns up. And, you know, it is a, it is a hard process because you will have a, an idea that you think is like, I know exactly how this is going to work from start to finish. But the process of writing allows your mind to take off and go in different places. And so then you got to stay on track, man, and you have to learn to do that. And, uh, and of course, you can trap yourself in some corners, mm -hmm. and you got to learn how to back out of them and then keep the story alive. And all that is, is the puzzle that you're putting together when you're doing a book, especially a novel or rather. Did you reach out to any other novelists, any other writers to get any directions or you just hit hit it no, hit the I ground mean, running? I had a co novelist, I mean I had a co writer, you know, Alan Eisenstock, dope, you know, dope co writer who helped me stay on board, but I mainly really formulated by those that I love. You know, I love the the Walter Mosley books. All the, you know, Devil in a Blue Dress and, the, you know, the characters that he created with the Easy Rollins characters or the Fearless Jones characters. These are the, the models I picked. I like James McBride. I like all those kind of uh, stories of our culture and our neighborhoods where somebody really described, like, how the street feel and what the people was doing so that we know that when we live in these communities, you can, like, visualize it. So mm -hmm. when you read my book, you will see that's how it feel. Like, you can, you can almost, without ever been there see exactly where he is and it'll remind you of where you think that is mm -hmm. and so I think that's the those are the people I, I model myself after when I you know just kind of uh, dove into this and is that what you're looking for when you write that book or that novel authenticity where the reader can be taken there on a journey yeah, for me, I mean, and, you know, in this situation, I kind of I do that like I do my comedy. I try to tell comedy from a perspective. Uh, it's really like observational from the community that we live in. You know, if I'm, I'm telling the joke about my cousins that you don't understand, and he talking about it, boy, you look like your daddy. Boy, if you don't look like doing your leave right there, you know, and he got the cigarette hanging out of his mouth. Like, you can picture all of right. that, right? And so that's kind of the same way I did the book. I just took these moments and then brought them alive. And, of course, the neighborhood has been renewed. Yeah, man. But you're dealing with this strike, which could be close to an end yeah. in, in L.A. How has that impacted you, and are you glad to see it over? Yeah, well, I'm definitely glad or that... On the verge of being over. Yeah, well, I'm definitely glad that there seems to be some, you know, uh, uh, real, real uh, leeway into this thing being over, you know, like it seems like it's going to ha happen. There's so many people that get affected by these jobs. I mean, at the top of the food chain, you know, you know, you can survive these moments, but again, I probably hire 150 people to do the neighborhood. And so it's people that do all kinds of jobs that's out here, like really struggling. And so, you know, you look for the opportunity to get back to work, you know. And so, um, including a lot of the writers, a lot of some of the writers on my show were young comedians that I brought up. And I put them on the show as writers, and this is one of their first jobs that get them the kind of money they can buy houses and do all kinds of things. And so when the money stopped, 
they like, damn, say it, you know, like this. So I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, you know. Yeah, they got holler at me when the sun. <laughs> Don't call me now, no, 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 no. But, no. but it's real, though. You realize, like, in the beginning, you know, you do have to have a lot of irons in the fire. So, you know, luckily for me, I try to think like that, not that I that I even thought that a strike would happen, but I was really blessed that me and Anthony had started the barbecue brand, and then this book was coming out. So I was able to stay active by really keeping a lot of irons in the fire, which is, you know, you know, kind of smart, what they call di diversifying your portfolio, mm -hmm. if you will. And so the TV show was one thing, but the opportunities that I, I use my career, my charisma, and my opportunities to do other things. And so I try to teach that to the guys, too. So that's what a lot of this is about, this this. This whole book run is just being an example to some, you know, comedians that's coming up to let you know you don't have to just be a stand-up. You can do a number of things, man.